Hey guys, starting up a little bit later. <clears throat> Can you tell I just woke up? <clears throat> I actually haven't. I just haven't talked at all today yet. Um, so we're going to be starting up here in just a minute. Just going to wait for a few people to get together so you have some time. Uh, patrons, if you want to go ahead and print out your workbooks so we can draw um, with each other and kind of have fun with the style together during today's live stream. And um, we're not going to play any music during today's stream, um, just to make sure that the video doesn't get taken down by YouTube. And also, now you can listen to your own music. It's just very quiet and awkward <laughs> in the meantime. But definitely stick around, we'll be starting in just two minutes. Are you ready to draw? 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 Uh, 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 uh. Are you guys ready? I'm excited. I'm excited. You had like every single possible <laughs> technical difficulty this morning, but we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. I'm excited. <laughs> How are you? All four of you that are watching, welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome <laughs> to the next live stream talking all about talking all about how to create some pretty spectacular letters with the newest workbook that we're calling Paintbrush. So let's uh, get started. I was like getting ready like 15 minutes before today's live stream and my second monitor wouldn't turn on. And when your second monitor doesn't turn on, then the program that I use to stream it's just like an endless mirror <laughs> and you can't really see anything. So we we're like, okay, let's try another monitor. Oh, we lost the cord to that monitor. <laughs> and I had to wake up Rick, my fiance, to like, hey, where's the cord? Did you take the cord? <laughs> and then my headphones were missing. And then I had to take his headphones. And they were just like, ah, 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 ah. 
So that's why we kind of started 14 minutes late today. But I'm here. I'm doing it. Let's do it. I'm excited to draw some things. Let's draw some stuff. Okay. So as always, I'm going to be doing this digitally uh, in Photoshop. And I don't know why I'm getting a buzzing. My phone is super far away from me. <laughs> I've noticed that if you have your phone too close to your microphone, it, um, oh, that's better. It probably helps if your microphone's actually pointed towards you. Uh, you get that little buzzing, annoying sound. I hate it, especially when your phone blows up all the time from Instagram. Just saying. All right, so since we're not gonna be playing music during today's stream, um, I'm gonna go ahead and play my own music independently, but I can't because this is what Spotify looks like right now. It's cool. Not only not only do I get the one spinner, I get two spinners. So that's sweet. <laughs> Thanks for nothing, computer. Is it me or is it like every single time Apple computers get around that two year mark, they're like, oh, we're going to start really fucking up on you. So you're forced to buy a new computer. Sorry. It's like the same thing with phones and stuff. It's super frustrating. So I'm just going to close Spotify because I need music because this awkward silence is going to drive me insane. And I'd much prefer for you guys to be able to listen to your own music. That way it's way, way better. Um, so today's live stream is actually available to all patrons and everybody. So if anybody out in the world wants to watch this video, you're more than welcome to. We're going to go ahead and put it on public release. We do this every once in a while just to kind of give potential uh, supporters of patron to kind of get an idea of what it would look like if you were part of the $15 or more pledge just so you can I don't know I think it's one thing to get a workbook for you to print it out and for you to follow the steps and for you to just kind of guess on some things but it's I think it's so much better when you're actually able to know a little bit more about how that letter is made it's things that I can't really fit inside a workbook unless I'm drawing like <laughs> unless I'm writing a couple paragraphs worth every piece um and just so you know like more about me and we can interact a little bit more even though I find with these live streams people seldomly talk I think because they're afraid not afraid but a lot of you don't have YouTube channels if you don't have a YouTube channel I highly recommend you get one um, so that way you can just go ahead and start following people on YouTube and you don't have to like be a streamer or um, a blogger of any kind to have a YouTube channel just connect it to your Gmail which I'm sure a lot of us have and you guys can interact with other artists like me on YouTube which is really nice so let's get started. Go ahead, gonna be using an iPad Pro and Apple Pencil. I'm using a program called AstroPad to screen mirror Photoshop to my iPad. I'm just gonna do a quick shout out on the Twitters. If you guys could do me the salad of anyone who is watching right now, feel free to um, share the link with your following to try to get some more people in here that might be interested in how to learn how to draw the style. You don't necessarily need the workbooks to draw them. You could just go ahead and take a normal sheet of paper and um, go ahead and give yourself some guides right here. There are only three guides that you need for this particular one. You just need this top line, which is considered the cap height. We have the X height, which really pretty much goes a little bit above the vertical center. So just a little bit higher than that. And then we have the baseline. The two that you really need to concern you with are the cap height and the baseline. The X height is really just helpful when like figuring out where this bowl of the B goes, where the crossbars on the E and the F go, things like that. So let's go ahead, let's do a little tweet tweet. Tweeting it up. Now live on YouTube, showing you how to draw these paint brush letters. Go ahead and copy and paste. Oh, Inception! Inception! This is what my little dashboard looks like, guys, for YouTube. There's six of you watching! Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. This is the little live link that we can share it on. Go ahead. Boop, boop, boop. It always helps when you put some hashtags in there. Just go hashtag lettering. Boop, boop, boop. Let's add an image of moi. I just took the screenshot because I'm dumb. And tweet. So if anyone here, if you don't want to go ahead and tweet, that's cool. I'm fine with it. Um, but if you want to go ahead and help a girl out, it's super help even just retweeting the tweet that I just tweeted. <laughs> that is always incredibly helpful. Try to get more people in here. And then toot, 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 toot. I'll even make it super easy on you guys. 
go ahead and putting them in the chat. So if you guys just want to hit the retweet button on that tweet I just tweeted, that'd be super nice. Thanks. All right, let's see if we can get some music in here so I can get my flow on. All right, so I'm just gonna work in Photoshop. This is pretty much like how I prepare every single workbook that I put out. Um, and then I go ahead and I put them into, uh, say LinkedIn, that is not what I use. I use InDesign um, to go ahead and lay out the pages together. Everything's pretty customized. So making sure, yep, we don't want pink. Let's use, actually, fuck it. I do wanna use pink, but I want a bright pink in order to draw these beautiful letters. We can take these one character at a time. Aw, some of you retweeted it. Thank you. I appreciate that, guys. Thanks. Oh, what's up, Jose? <laughs> Hola, prima. What's up? Just doing an awkward live stream on the internet. How are you? My cousin's in the house. What's up, cuz? How you doing? How you doing? I'm failing at life today. And my iPad isn't char isn't charging. <laughs> Why is this happening to me today? <sighs> I'll just manually connect it to my computer. Maybe that'll be it. Because right now I have it plugged into my USB deck. Let's see here. My computer just wants to say fuck you today. Which one of these cords do I not need? That's a webcam. What does this go to? Oh, this is my printer. I don't need that one. Here we go, hopefully that'll fix it. Because of course, my, my Rick used my iPad and then didn't charge it, so it's about to die. Kinda need that. Is it charging now? It's charging! Oh man, we are kicking ass today. And of course, iTunes wants to open up. <laughs> it's like, oh, your second monitor doesn't work. Oh, just completely unplug everything and then replug it and then it'll work. And it's like, oh, your microphone's not working. Oh, you should fix your microphone. Oh, where are your Oh, hey, your iPad's not charging. I'm telling you guys, to like do these live streams and stuff, sometimes it's just a huge pain in the ass. I just want to draw letters in Photoshop, guys. <laughs> All right, I think I'm finally ready. All right, let's take one last sip of coffee, and this time I'll try not to totally spill it on myself. Success. Can I please play some music? What kind of music do I want to play? You guys can't hear it because then the video will get taken down. So I have this playlist called the Woman of Illustration playlist, which I'll totally share with you. Share, copy playlist link. So we can all listen to it at the same time. So it feels like we're listening to the same music. Okay, so I'm pasting it into the chat. All right, go ahead and go open up Spotify. I'm gonna play it. And then we can listen to this really cool playlist that I made for my chicas. There we go. It's all usually female singers, hence the word woman in it. Oh, thank you guys for the retweets. Brenda. Gracias, mi amor. All right, I'm ready. I got the soups on, the soups on in my brain. All right, turn on Astropad. After 60 minutes, you finally ready to draw some letters? Me too. Getting like a clock. All right, so with this letter A, pretty much how we're gonna be formulating all of these cool words is that um, we're gonna start with a skeleton and then we're gonna add a little bit of weight almost in like a ribbon-like fashion, which I'll show you. And then we're gonna add some fill, but instead of us just filling it all really nilly, we have to be kind of intentional about the direction that we want this fill to be. So it has that kind of scratchy punk rock kind of appeal. And then we're gonna add flicks to kind of give it just a little bit more of like a rough edge and then a couple of outside flicks, which I'll show you. Okay, so with this guy, you wanna to try to bend the line, kind of curve it like so. And then you have this guy and then you have like that. So it's up to you what process you wanna be able to do for this piece. If you wanna do the entire skeleton like this and then add weight, go for it. Or if you wanna better follow the worksheet just do it shape by shape. It's really up to you, whatever is the easiest for you. Some people like to do it shape by shape like I have in the workbook. So some things to keep in mind 
is where you're putting this crossbar on the A. Now notice how high my X height is here and my actual crossbar is just going a little bit lower than the actual X height. It's because we wanna be able to maximize the space, the negative space, this little triangle kind of chilling here in the A because that really starts to impede readability. Now, the more um, fun, I guess, is a word you could use, more decorations and stuff that you add to lettering, the more you have to be aware of whether or not that's going to impede someone's ability to actually read what you're writing because again if you can't read lettering what's the point of doing it in the first place all right so when we fill this we want to do little scratches so notice i used kind of like a thick brush for the outline and i went ahead and reduced my brush size to fill it obviously if you're just using something like a micron um that's totally fine but if you want to use a thicker one for the edge and a thinner one for the inside that's cool and you wanna go ahead, and the key, this might just look like random scribbles, but notice that they're all going in line with the direction of that shape. So, like, I don't wanna fill it like this. This is not gonna give it the appearance that I want it to have, and needs to be in the direction of the shape. And the more loose you do it, the more textured it'll look. So same thing, I'm actually gonna rotate my iPad here. Just notice that this is, falling where are you LA panel there you go so with this crossbar notice that I'm kind of like something that might even help you is going like this like doing a couple lines that are just throughout it and filling it like that or if you can control your hand a little bit more just kind of going with the flow so as it arcs up you arc up as it arcs down you arc down so you have this a now there's a couple extra things I can do to this. I'm gonna super zoom in here so you can see what I'm talking about. Even though this looks pretty rough and tumble as it is right now, I wanna go ahead and I wanna give it some extra flick. So I'm actually gonna start my brush right down here where it's hidden and then I'm gonna flick up. You see that? So just flick up at different lengths so it really starts to look like the, ed the edge of like a brush. And I'll do like a couple little extra flicks like that. So it looks like it's almost kind of like disappearing a little bit. And you do that with every single edge that you have on the letter. Yeah, iTunes quit like 10 minutes ago. Wow, you suck computer. All right, do some more flicks. Again, the key is starting from where it's hidden. So right over here, you don't want to flick inward, you want to flick outwards. And you want these flicks to be at different lengths. And then you just maybe want to add like a few little additional flicks or dots just so it looks like it's disappearing. Okay. And if this is something that you have an issue with, or maybe it's just something you think is fun, just go ahead, just practice it. That really is the hard, fast way <laughs> to get better at anything. And it's like, oh, I always wish I could play guitar. Maybe you should start practicing guitar. Oh, I wish I could sing better. Oh, if you just practice to sing, you probably could sing. Same thing with drawing. And that's why I like these workbooks, because if you ever have an issue with one particular letter or one way to do things, you can do what's called deliberate practice. And if you like really suck at S's, then maybe you need to fill an entire page of S's until you can just tackle that shit and be able to kill it. All right. So we added some additional flicks on the ends here. Now I'm going to go ahead and even out this line because it kind of gets thin and thick. So that's something you can do. And what I'll do is I'll add additional lines that are kind of disappearing, that are kind of away from my piece. Almost like it's like a, the brush, if there was ink on it, you, you didn't really, it didn't really catch perfectly. That's kind of like the look that we're looking for. So just adding a couple extra flicks along the body. You just wanna be careful not to add too much and maybe have them like almost look like a line. Like these all look like they're together, but I kind of separated them with dashes. Now with this A, obviously my second A is less italic than my first, but that's okay. As long as within the context of what you're doing, it's all like if you do an entire word, as long as all of those words are going the same direction, you're fine. But for practice, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if you're using Photoshop like me, it's nothing that the skew tool can't fix. Oh look, it's tilted like I intended it to be. <laughs> I love pink. I'm going to start using color, I think, with lettering adventures. The only reason I use black is so that way it's easier on your guys' printers 
and you don't have to worry about like, oh, I ran out of cyan. I have to go to the freaking store now and go to Best Buy and get more ink for me to print out this damn workbook. All right, let's move on to the letter B. Hey, Nicole, what's up, girl? How you doing, baby boo? <laughs> Again, if you guys are just chiming in, feel free to just draw these letters on a piece of paper and pen is usually going to work the best with this. You might not want to use a pencil for these guys. All right. So we're going to start out doing the shape method. Again, if you want to do the skeleton method where you just do the diagonal and then you have it go like that and then you add a weight, perfectly fine. But for me personally, I like to do the shape by shape. So this is what I mean by ribbon effect, okay? This is really gonna affect you mostly when you're doing any letter that has a bowl in it, right? So the letter A didn't have a bowl, it just had two stems and a crossbar. So this guy would go like this, and then I would kind of take it from here, and it's a ribbon. So that way, if you notice in my example, it gets a little bit thinner here. The second bowl of the B would probably start right about there. And then same thing. Go ahead, start out the ribbon here and here. So we're doing this shape by shape. And it's really up to you um, how you want this B to look or how curled or straight you want it to be. Um, it'll make, you like, you'll know more so what to do when you're using this style within the context of an entire piece when you have more than one word or a few letters. Oh, I'm getting, oh, and Nicole, Nicole retweeted. Thank you, Nicole. Just chilling, waiting for wings. I'm so jealous. All right, let's go ahead and scratch it on up. Hope you guys are chilling to some good tunes. My word. I think what I like about these live streams is that once they're done being live, I can go ahead and I can just, you know, give people the link that starts when we actually like started doing the letters. <laughs> so people who are watching this from the future don't have to deal with my 16 minutes of like, what do I do? Why is this not working? <laughs> What's up, Lori? Love your videos, Dina. Thank you for this. Yeah, you're welcome. Every once in a while, we'll go ahead and we'll make one of these um, live streams free to the public. I actually don't want to make it. This actually needs to be like more like that. So that way this little part gets a little thinner. Now, if you want it to be curly, there's no rule saying it doesn't have to be that way. It's just something I like for this aesthetic. So that way it looks more like um, paint, like um, what's the word, like sign painters, like what you'll see like on old school buildings and go signage. All right, let's add a couple flicks. Typically you want to like have a main flick, like out of all of the ends of these strokes, this would probably be the one that I would emphasize the most. This guy that's starting up on the top of the bowl of the B, just so that way it gets your attention more. Typically if you have too much going on throughout the entire letter, people don't know really what to look at. So I'm just gonna smooth out some of this stuff here is probably my favorite thing about doing this style. It's like a way to do something quick and dirty, but actually putting like a bunch of thought into it. All right, so we went ahead and added a couple flicks to the ends. Now we just want to add maybe a few lines here. Again, almost like the paintbrush kind of ran out of, especially along the bowls. Typically if you're using a paintbrush and you start to change directions, um, it'll leave these kind of um, wisps that are going along the rounded parts of the letter. So you do want to pay attention to that. Like I probably add one like right here. And what's nice is the brushes that I'm using in Photoshop, um, which you guys can get from Creative Market. It's called the Lettering Toolkit by um, Retro Supply Co. All right, so that's our B. All right, I'm gonna choose a different cool color for the next row. 
just so these worksheets can kind of look cute. All right, let's do the C. Pretty much any letter that's more round are typically more of my favorite letters, um, just because they look really cool, um, more so than the straight edge letters. But I definitely invite you to take your own kind of creative spin. So with the C, and also what really helps is when you try to do quick movements. Like I know I need to get another camera that's just on my iPad. So you guys can see my hands. But you can just see how quick I wrote that. So you typically want it to be more of a condensed C. Like you don't want it to be too wide where it's just like this. Like that's probably the wrong way to do it. Something that looks a little bit more compressed. And the way I like how this style goes is this kind of is more curved where this looks more oblong. And then we apply the exact same ribbon effect. But instead of starting here, right here, we're going to start with the base. So we're going to start like this, almost as if we were adding weight to a varied weight style like that. And then we're going to start right here. Curve it out, curve it out, curve it out. We'll go like that. Now it's up to you if you want to go ahead and make these brush strokes. See how this one kind of widens at the end and this one kind of stays um, more or less that same shape. Up to you. I will say that I do think it has more of that kind of brush look when you do kind of warp it out. And that way I can go in here and kind of perfect how wide and thick I want it to be. But I do want to make sure that this spine of the C is and the edges are the thickest parts. And then when it starts to kind of change directions, that's when it thins out. So we're going to go fill this out. Now go ahead and break it up within the ribbons that you just created. Okay. So we want to go ahead, start from this guy from the top and then pull it out. Just so it looks almost like hair. What's up, Benjamin? <laughs> so this is where you had gone. But no, I know it's grim. I know you, boo. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a Twitch person anymore. I'm all about the YouTube. I'm all about the tube now because it helps me with SEO and my marketing strategy with my online presence. Mm -hmm. Those first 15 minutes are the best. Hashtag real life. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, cuz. It's like, oh, nothing's working. I always think when I have technical difficulties, it's funny. So I just keep it. <laughs> you should see me like now that I don't do as much live streaming and, um, <laughs> and do vlogging where I'm actually able to do like post-production on my videos. I cannot tell you the bloopers and like the weird things I do in the video. That's why there's so many like weird candid shots. Cause I have to say the same thing like four or five times just to make it sound right. So there'll be times like the first time would be like, hello and welcome to my vlog. My name is Dina. I draw things. It's like, I can never get the energy to be like interesting. So I have to do it a few times and be silly. So that's why I'm starting to include things like, oh, this is Dina doing a weird dance. Uh, oh, this is Dina making weird eyes at the camera. Cause I have to like get into that mode. But back to what we're doing. Um, as you can see, I'm kind of, instead of just scribbling it, for the C, I really want to make sure that everything here is going in the same direction. So I'm doing these long strokes. And then if you do enough long strokes, it looks like a scribble. Hey, get it, girl. Thanks. I'm still going to call you Mr. Grimm, though, just to confuse everyone else who's in the chat. Oh, thank you. Yeah, my hair is all short. I like that. <laughs> I will say it's just coming in here. Like, oh, you're so pretty. Oh, Prisosa. <laughs> I will say one thing. You'll be proud of me. I'm, like, really obsessed with, like, um, all of the new movies and shows and stuff that are coming on Netflix that are in Spanish. Like, um, I just watched The uh, Cable Girls. And I really, really, really... And Netflix tried to trick me. And, you know, they because they have it dubbed in English. And I was like, why does the words that they say not match their mouths? And then it took me, like, a while to realize it was a Spanish show. And then you just put English subtitles on it, and you have it, and it's, like, Spanish from Spain. Um, so, you know, nicer, nicer Spanish. Not that garbage that Barricos say. Um, <laughs> and it's like you learn Spanish by doing that. And then now I'm watching another show that's in Spanish. I can't, I don't remember what it's called, but it's about, like, a bunch of robbers that are trying to like rob 
uh, the Mint. I don't know what it's called. This like the, the building in Spain where they make all this money. It's really cool. And it's actually pretty comforting because that like being a little kid and not knowing Spanish, I always felt out of place when like my dad and my family would speak Spanish around me and I couldn't really understand what they're saying. And it like would make me so upset. And now I find it really comforting. <laughs> See you later. See what I did there? Oh shit. Keep up the awesome work. Thanks, 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 thanks. I don't mind. It's weird even to people I actually see daily call me Grim. <laughs> really? Well, it's just like when you have like a friend from like childhood that you always have a nickname for and then you like, you know, see them at a high school reunion or maybe you're back in town at a bar or something and it's hard for, they're like, please call me Philip. And it's like, no, you're Cheekers. Your name is Cheekers or whatever name you gave them that they probably hate. And you don't want to be rude, but it's like once you call someone by a certain name, it's so difficult to call them by another name. <laughs> Like, I very rarely call Rick, Rick. I very, I'm never like, oh, hey, R Rick. I always call him, like, one of my pet names or something. Am I crying? Like, I feel like there's water. Oh my, is there a leak in my house? What's happening? I just get emotional when I talk about me, Amelia. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to add a couple more flicks. On the outside here, you want to be sparing with them. Like, if I'm going to do a flick here, like an extra line here on the outside of the C, I don't want to mimic that same shape on the inside or else it looks too repetitive and therefore isn't actually as realistic as it should be, right? And then I'll do a couple that's kind of like off. Just so it looks kind of more feathered. And it's like a really pretty style, especially when you do it all in the same color. Yeah, no joke, my friend who I've been friends with for, like, fucking 12 years, I'm the godfather of his kids, and I am Grim, and Uncle Grim to his kids. Oh, that's cute. I love that. Call him Pickle Rick. Oh, I called him Pickle Rick. Me and Rick are definitely obs obs <laughs> obsessed with Rick and Morty. We were watching some documentary last night about the creators of it, and, like, the guy doing all the voices and being silly at Comic-Con and stuff. And I just bought this really cool enamel pin. Here, I'll show it to you. And when I was in Wisconsin, we went to this, um, like, pipe store to get some tobacco stuff for Rick. Um, and then, where's the right? This guy. Here we go. I don't know if you'll see it with the light, but I love this pin <laughs> so much. So, it's, <laughs> it's Rick, and he's smoking weed, which is Morty. The pipe, he's smoking Morty, and then his hair is made out of weed. It truly, truly makes me happy. It's like the cutest little, and I, I think everyone who has beanies should just put a god-awful amount of enamel pins on them, because enamel pins are the future. <laughs> I love pins. It's like the best way to be able to get uh, an artist's work for not a lot of money in your home without having to spend you know, hundreds of dollars on an original painting or even $20 on a poster. You know what I mean? They're usually like $10, $8. That's why I'm such a big fan of stickers and small things like that. That is dope. <laughs> All right, let's do this D. All right, again, so I'm gonna show you two approaches just cause there's some um, new people that are in here. Oh, I had my tangent about the pen and people were like, you're not talking about lettering enough. Like I'm over it. <laughs> Um, so again, you could do it this way where you do the skeleton. Oh, I did that not work. There we go. And then you have the D kind of go like that. Again, you want to have it be more condensed. So it helps me to like draw it a few times and then you can add the weight and do the ribbon like that. So you go ahead, build it up step by step. I'm still a big fan of just doing it this way, doing it shape by shape. I just feel like I have more control over it. And when I'm able to better visualize the thickness of the letters, I think it's really, really helpful, especially when you're, you know, obviously putting letters together in a sentence. So again, we want it to be a ribbon. So as it starts to rotate, we want to go ahead and have it kind of pull off. 
And then a little bit before where that line ended, you start it up again and then have it go back out. Don't worry if your line, again, we want the, this edge right here to kind of come out, kind of bloat out for the brush. You can go ahead and make this more round if you want it to. If you want to like kind of finesse the, the line work. Since it's going to be so scribbly, it doesn't really matter what we do here. All right, let me scribble it in. If you're using a if you're using something more like a sharpie versus like a micron that has more bleed then you're really going to want to not put that much pressure on your paper if you're working traditionally or else it's just it you're not going to be able to see the texture it's just going to look like a filled in letter you need that texture you need some of that paper to show through for it to have that vibrant kind of rough look that you were going for Oh yeah, I did some new things and stuff and I'll send you a DM on Twitter with the fam. Oh, really? Cool. <laughs> Gotta get them thick. Yes, with three C's, extra thick letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for hanging out, Mr. Grimm. People on YouTube don't typically talk very much. All right, so this is a little bit too open-ended, so I'm just gonna fill in some of these gaps that are a little bit too thick and in your face. Cause you don't want too much paper coming through or else it looks too intentional. And don't worry about like, oh, but you can see the overlap of this line going over that line. Well, that's good because that's what you would see if you were using a paintbrush to draw these letters. You know what I mean? Of course, of course. All right, let's add a couple additional flicks now that we have it filled in. Starting from the inside of your letter, just kind of going out. And then a couple like unattached kind of dashes. Remember you need them to be at different lengths. This little guy breaks my heart, so I'm just gonna fix it. And then you wanna have a couple extra little rough around the edges lines that kind of get m missed. It's up to you how, it, it like should almost look like it's vibrating a little bit. I am here to learn better lettering stuff and make terrible puns and keep you company. Aw, thanks. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. All right, let's pick. I like a different color every row. It's fun. All right, we're going to do orange in the next row. All right, we're going to try to speed it up a little bit now that we've been streaming for 40 minutes. All right, let's do the E's and the F's pretty quickly. Now, these are more straight. The only thing that's not really straight, I mean, I don't know. They're kind of curved, too. So notice the curve in the line. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and do an E that's just straight, Feel free, but I like it when it looks like a little bit angled. So going ahead, this line's angled, this line's angled, the crossbar's angled, and the bottom. So notice that my crossbar isn't as long as my two strokes above and below it, and that my crossbars in the top and bottom go out further than both the left and right. So if you want to make your letter like that, that's that would be the skeleton. Again, I'm going to do it piece by piece. Now this one, since we this stroke doesn't end, you don't need to worry about bloating the ends. I'm going to have this guy go like that. You can bloat these ends a little bit if you want to. I think I'm just going to keep it as is. Then the crossbar, a little shorter. Let me just rough it in there. Just scribble it on in. It's so, it's like such a good medium between like a controlled scribble and then like a fuck you scribble. And then go back in. If anything looks a little bit too opaque, just kind of go over it a little bit more. And then let's do a couple flicks here. It's already pretty flicky. 
pretty slicky icky sicky. Then I add a little bit of tapering here. Uh, probably not on the center crossbar. I think I want to leave that guy alone actually. Yeah, I don't need to add too many flicks because I already kind of did that. So I think my mo my main kind of taper will probably be this top piece. And then we're just gonna add a few little outside lines. Boop. Not technically a line drop shadow or anything like that, but just more. And for these ones, we're gonna more or less have the center crossbar on both the E and the F, um, right below the, the X height. Plus I miss the puppers. Yeah, my puppies are, they're just chilling. They're not really doing anything right now. Do you still have your Redbubble and Society uh, storefronts or did you move on to new outlets? Um, I kept Society 6, but I haven't added anything to it in a really long time and I don't plan to because Redbubble kicks Society 6 butt by a lot. Um, and I'm still adding stuff to Redbubble. It's mostly older stuff that I put in my book that got published last year, this guy. Because now that it's been published, I have the right to all of the different illustrations and stuff that I did for this guy. Um, I now have the right to use them. So if you guys want to check out a book with tons of styles in it, the big awesome book of Hayden Chalk Letter, you can pick it up at any major book place. So like I did over, I don't know, a hundred spot illustrations for each. There's so much lettering in here. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, but where's a good example? So like at the end of every chapter, I did a bunch of little spot illos. Um, so now I can go ahead and utilize those assets and sell them on different things if I want to. And then like this was a, to teach you how to do a slab serif in this book. And then doing all these little spot stuff in here. But my style's changed quite a bit <laughs> since this is all work from like over a year and a half ago. Because it takes a while to get something printed and produced when you get published. Um, but yeah. I don't really talk about it much because um, I don't get royalty off the book. So if I don't benefit from telling people to buy it, why would I tell people to buy it? And that's actually why I started Lettering Adventures. Because I wanted to explore more, more styles that the publicist just didn't approve. Um, because they thought they were too weird. And I was like, fuck you, you don't know what people want. <laughs> I'll sh people love weird styles. I'm what the hell's wrong with you? You don't know what I'm listening to, but let's just take a moment to just like just kind of get into it. The groove of the F. All right, another curved stem. Curve the top. Do a little crossbar. Again, the rule here is just make sure the crossbar just isn't as long as the top. This guy got a little thin, there we go. And just, if you want, if it's easier for you to fill it like this, like where you just go ahead and do long flicks, that's cool if you're having a hard time maintaining the illusion and then you can kind of scribble it in because you kind of have those, um, almost like a wireframe of scribbles. You guys can add the flicks like as you scribble. It's just up to you. If you're kind of getting used to having that kind of perfect match of the perfect and imperfect balance. And I think I'm gonna make this a little shorter. Yeah. A couple extra flicks in there so they're different strokes. So it's like almost like I'm using a dry brush. And I think I'm gonna add a couple extra to the top here. Oof. Almost like it's made out of straw, kind of. It's kind of like the vibe. It's just a fun style to do. Oh, they have a Kindle edition? That's cool. Yeah, I got published through Random House. Well, it was Alpha. Was it Alpha? Yeah, Alpha, which is owned by Random House. Yeah. Dance break! It's a little bit more awkward to do dance breaks when everyone else is listening to different music on their computers. All right, let's go ahead. Let's do this really cool G. 
and we're gonna do let's choose like a teal color and snake all right with this G again it's best to kind of do quick strokes so this guy you want to do kind of like the C like that and then you go ahead oh I almost forgot you want to do the biggest stroke first and if you want to be a little bit wider that's cool and then go ahead add the again you want the top to kind of bloat out if you want it to and this top this bottom one you don't need to worry about it as much because it's going to be connecting to that G and then we just have a straight line that's just kind of well, everything's got like kind of like an angle to it it's got a little bit of a curve so this guy kind of ends I gotta get my weight a little bit better here this is why I love this scribble style because you can mess it up and it don't even matter You can tell what I'm listening to because I'm going to start singing it. I was excited about the book until you said you don't get any royalties. <laughs> I know. Oh, Dina, just didn't, I just didn't know. I didn't know any better. I was just like, it was a payout type of deal. It was like the most amount of money I'd ever made from a lettering project. And I just, I was like, oh, it's cool. I don't need to get a royalty. <laughs> no. That's why I don't tell anybody about it. So I get like all these like DMs or um, tags and stuff on people buying the book. I'm like, cool. I don't see any of that money. <laughs> That's why I'm like, lettering adventures. Everyone get lettering adventures. Help support an artist and learn something in return. All right, so we scribble it in there. So you can see like this G that I made it's obviously has more of a varied weight than the first G, but that's okay. All right, let's add a couple more flick, flickety doodahs here. And then again, you want to kind of taper it off a little bit with a couple additional flicks. And then, like we said earlier, if there's a curve, you want to kind of add a couple of little strawy pieces, especially at those spaces. There we go. And that's our G, 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 G. trying to get this angle just right it's driving me nuts there we go that's our g h's are awesome now this guy instead of it being like this angle it's really just a straight line and i tried a couple different versions with the h's and found that when they're really condensed and just straight but at a diagonal um they just look better than if they're curved it's just weird that certain letters look better when they're curved and certain letters look better when they're straight and, depend and that changes from style to style. So it's just, it's just something you have to kind of play with yourself. <laughs> play with yourself. I'm going to use my other hand here to keep my iPad straight and having a hard time. It's like, oh, now I got to do a straight line. My brain's like, what? How do I do a straight container? I don't remember. Yeah, just listen to the gangster app while you're all dancing. Didn't really fit. <laughs> That's okay. Now, what's really great about the style is like this um, crossbar. It doesn't have to be a wave, right? It could be a mustache, right? It could just be straight. If you want to just be like, it could really be anything you want. But I really like the wave crossbar. It's just it, it adds a little personality. Doing again a ribbon effect. I'm gonna have this kind of blowed out on both sides. Now, if you wanna go ahead and just do a normal kind of rectangle kind of container, that's cool too. All right, let's go ahead, scribble it in.
All right, it's kind of boring, so we're gonna add some flicks at the ends. I'm listening to this song, can you tell? Hold on. Oh, didn't I, didn't I, didn't I see you crying? Yeah, you know what song I'm listening to. Be like dying. Oh. I'm just getting over a cold and I'm like really mad that I can't sing. Me and Rick are gonna try to do an open mic night tonight. I, mean, I just can't, I just can't do it. I'm like, oh, I'm still like coughing up like weird stuff. <laughs> I almost embarrass myself. It'd be fun, like I'll do karaoke or something low pressure like that. Couple flicks all along the outside. Like we don't know how to color the lines. There we go. But like this guy, like these two little dashes next to each other doesn't quite work. That's why I need to really play with varied lengths of strokes. All right. Now we're gonna do purple. Nope. Now we're gonna do Oh, didn't I? Oh, I'll do this purple. This purple's pretty. All right, so we're going to go do that straight line first, just like we did for the H. Just a straight diagonal container. And then the, the top of the I is going to be a wave. We're going to try to maintain the same weight throughout, and then the bottom is just going to be a curved stroke. Right? We want these to more or less be the same width. If they're a little bit off, that's fine. Just have the edges kind of bloat out more so than the... All right, and then scribble it on in there. I'm listening to I Want You To Want Me by Letters To Glow. Is it Chloe or is it Chloe? I actually don't know. Hope you guys are listening to your own music and you're not just chilling in horrible, horrible silence. That's also why all my vlogs don't have any sound in them. Because even when I buy fucking royalty free music, freaking YouTube still flags it. I'm like, no, 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 I paid for it. I paid for it. I paid for this music and you're still flagging it. What the F? And then it'll just fucking like take the video down. I'm like, YouTube, not okay. All right, add some flicks at the top and bottom. Going ahead and making sure all the edges have that cool rough feeling. And add a couple little flicks on the outside. There we go. Such a pretty style. All right, let's go ahead right into the J. Oh, you could do any kind of curl you want. You don't have to necessarily do the curl I did. I think it. You normally want to start with the main part, like almost like a little hanger or a cane. You want to just hit that baseline as you draw it. Have it kind of curl into itself like that. We're going to add some weight to it. Make sure it's a consistent line and have it kind of taper into itself as it gets to the bottom. And then this guy, we want it to be wider. Let me have it go like that. So that way this little part is thinner. And now you want this part to stick out the top so you can kind of go a little bit above that cap height if you want and then just go ahead and do a wave for the top any kind of wave you don't have to do my wave whatever wave makes you happy i'm gonna have these guys taper out a little bit more than my original youtube has no chill <laughs> i know oh yeah i'll see you later bye benjamin yeah dude Later. Now my buddy's gone. Now someone else needs to come out of lurk mode and talk to me. Keep me company as I teach you these letters. And it's really just practice, like regardless of like if you're listening to me the whole time or not. Just 
some flicks here. These are a little bit too much of the same weight, so it's gotta get them in there. And even though there's like these kind of messy bits, I, I like the messy bits because it's a messy style. So when I do like awkward waves, I kind of fill it with long lines and then I kind of scribble it in. So everything looks like it's going in the direction of the stroke, just as if, as if it was painted with a brush. Add a couple lines in here. Have it kind of couple extra little pieces. Nope, too much. Now I'm listening to Black Sheep by Dorothy. Which is all on the playlist I shared with you guys earlier. Oh, look at this page. It's so pretty with colors. I love it. I love it. All right, what's the color we haven't used yet? We already have two warm colors. We have, well, three warm. I don't know. I want to use yellow, but that's not going to be opaque enough. What if we do like a gold? Would that be too light? Yeah, let's do let's do yellow. All right, K is interesting. I got a couple tricks for yeah. All right, so we're gonna do a curved line. Come on. Oh, it's touching the monitor. That's why I was like, why is it not working? Go ahead and do the container. You want this guy to come up and go below the X height. And you want it to be thinner as it comes in here and then bloated right here. And then this guy, you need to go ahead and envision this top angle of your stem right here. And then imagine it going down and then flicking up. And that's how you know where this leg goes. So this is the stem, this is the arm, where to go down and do the leg. So the leg doesn't go here. This is the wrong way to do a K in any style, okay? So we wanna go ahead and give it a little bit of room and then have it curl up. Remember we're doing a ribbon style. So as this goes down, it stops. And as it goes back up, it flicks upward. Let's fill it, scrub it all in. <coughs> when you're scribbling, try to get out of the habit of doing it like this. Or you want it to just be like that. And I'll tell you, no, at the end of this worksheet, I'll show you guys a couple different ideas for how to decorate the style. Even though it's pretty decorative, there's a few things, there's two different Let's use the word variances. I think that's a better word. A, different, a couple of different cool ways you can vary this style. All right, let's do some flicky flickety flicks. It's a little bit too textured, so I'm just going to kind of go in here and fill it in a little bit more. We don't want our paintbrush to be that dry. Hit me with your best shot. Can you tell what I'm listening to? The power of K. <laughs> I love K logs. All right. This L. I'm going to go ahead. Angled. And then we're not going to quite touch the ground because we're going to have this guy come out like this. It's up to you if you want this to kind of bloat out. I'm going to keep it all pretty much mono weight, I think, for this guy. Since it's kind of like a weird angle, I'm just going to kind of do long strokes to fill it and then I'll scribble it in. So I'm doing a stroke, picking up my pen, doing a stroke, picking up my pen. And then I'll go ahead and scribble it in there. You didn't think there were different ways to scribble, did ya? I bet you you didn't.
Now, if anybody wants to chat, I would love to know if there's any additional styles of lettering you would like to learn that maybe I could add to the roster of lettering adventures for 2018. What year are we in? I feel like 2018 is right. I don't know. For like the first month of any new year, I always just think, um, I don't know what year it is. <laughs> the same thing when you turn a year older. People, everyone asks you how old you were. Like 28, 29. Fuck, I'm 29. <laughs> My last year to have the word 20 before. <laughs> <laughs> in my age all right so we pretty much just rocked that style but before we piece out i'm going to take this space up here and i'm going to show you guys how to do a word with these letters we just got to think about a word the only the only word i found was head <laughs> Oh, I'm going to do glad. I'll do glad. That seems like a better word. I'm going to do it in this darker green color. So using the letters we just did, we're going to go ahead. Now, when you're doing an entire phrase, I'm going to go ahead and use a guide here to continue my guides here. So we always put in your baseline, your cap height, and your X height when you're doing a phrase. So if I'm doing... So if I'm going to do a word, I'm going to do a, a really rough kind of wireframe, right? And automatically as I'm drawing it, I was like, okay, this L is going to take away some of my room in between these letters so I can actually kind of customize it like that. And also for this A, I could still do a wave if I wanted to, or I could just have it be straight. But for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it match the same angle as this L since I'm already kind of doing that. And then I'm going to go in here a little bit more refined and add the weight. Have that guy bloat. Let this guy go down. Just add the weight to my skeleton. And instead of this guy coming out like this, I'm going to do the opposite and have this stroke kind of come out further. And then have the A. Let me make this a little shorter. Take it off. So if you want to go ahead and just copy what I'm doing to practice, that's cool. Go ahead and add in some weight. Make this D a little bit better. And it's a little bit too wide. There we go, just right, okay. Go ahead, add weight to this guy. Do the ribbon effect. All right, and then we just fill it. And then when you're going ahead and looking at all the different letters in this way, you can start to look at things like, okay, do I have enough kerning in between each of my letters? That is the negative space between each letter. Is the weight staying consistent? Is that bowl of the G matching the same weight as the stem of the L. Is anything getting bloated when it's not supposed to be? Like this A starts to get a little bit fat right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and touch it up a little bit. And this guy. Since I kind of cut off this A, I need to make sure there's at least a little bit of space there so you can see that it's an A. And have this guy bloat a little bit. So you just like it's just kind of like a controlled way to do messy letters. Do a couple flicks, a little additional flicks at the ends here. So it looks different like weights and it starts to taper off a little bit in certain spaces.
add a couple lines on the outside to kind of give it more of a textured vibe. Do you still, even though <clears throat> I'm kind of breaking some of the rules as I'm drawing this piece, it's still more or less on those guides you kind of gave yourself in the beginning. This guy doesn't really have any varied weight, so I'm just gonna erase some stuff. So now you start to see how the letters that I just showed you how to draw letter by letter is really helpful when you're starting to put them in your own composition. Looking good. All right, you guys ready for the next sheet? It's only one more sheet. All right, so I'm going to the second page. Go ahead and start with pink again. Now this is pretty much where all the hard letters go to hang out. All right, M is pretty difficult, so I'll try to take it slow with this guy. All right, we're gonna do this line by line. So what I like to do is I like to do these two lines at the same time, just because they're both going in the same direction. So I wanna pay close attention to that. And then I go ahead and add weight to both, obviously staggering them like so, because I want it to look like it's moving upward. And then I know where this line has to go because it needs to curve in here. And then this line is still almost doing like a check mark. So I can tell that that M is wrong because there's more negative space here between this line and this line than there is here. So I gotta do it again. Probably would help if I just did a skeleton first. Like if I just went ahead and went like this and then I went like that. Now it's cool because this is like actually a style that you can get pretty messy with. Now my M where these two lines meet is much higher than in my example, but whatever way seems more natural. So this is definitely one of the styles where you actually can be a little bit more scratchy than you can with normal styles. A lot of people, when they first start drawing, they get just, like, if you're gonna draw a person, you're like this, because you're unsure of where your line goes. You're like, ooh, I don't know what to do. Versus eventually, once you start to remove some of that pressure, then you're like, oh, this is a circle. This is the eyes. This is his little face. And so it just stops being so scratchy. But with this style, scratch away which is nice it's like a really nice I think beginner style it's very low pressure and it gets you used to like not trying to press so hard when you draw because that's a rookie mistake right there if your hand is hurting after only like 10 or 20 minutes of drawing you know that you're putting just way way too much pressure on yourself to draw that letter I'm actually going to thin this out a little bit There we go. I'll just redraw that line. So I get a little bit more negative space. These negative spaces actually matter a lot more than the positive space in the drawing. Because just like the A in the beginning, these little gaps tell our eyes what letter this is. And the easier it is to distinguish those negative spaces, the easier we can read the letter and, and, and read a word. Then we want to add some flickies. Maybe have them taper off a little bit. Varied weight is key. Do a couple little extra lines for oomph. So it just looks crazy. Let me erase this little face that I did. There we go. All right, ends pretty similar. It's just curved in a different way. 
have this guy curve. This guy kind of goes out and then this one kind of goes in again. So if we do that step by step, this guy doesn't quite hit the cap height. You just want to give it a subtle bend. I gotta move up my sleeve. It's making a scratching noise. There we go. Now I'm listening to Gago. Here we go. Having this guy curl curve out with about that much negative space. You can give it a little bit more if you want. And then have this guy come back up. So if it's easier for you, you could totally have your N do the skeleton first. If you are having a hard time, my screen's just like, I want to do what I want. I'm trying to balance it. Some of these harder letters are kind of annoying like that. So if you want to go ahead and do this, so it looks more like the N in the sample, and then add weight, ain't nothing wrong with that. Just gotta know where to add the weight so that way you have that nice gap because again if i add weight here that gap just got hella hella thin so when you run into those issues just kind of use your guide your skeleton as the halfway mark ain't nothing wrong with a half mark and then you just boop boop and i'm like okay that's about the weight so that way i still have that same amount of negative space Scribble it on out. Going in the direction of the stroke. Views, they drop in like flies, like this page is too hard. I got stuff to do. <laughs> That's okay. We don't just do it for those that are watching now. We do it for those of you who are watching later. Mm -hmm. Just in case you need a little help with your letters. All right, we fill in some of these white spaces. It's a little bit too white spaced. It's too dirty. So that way it just looks like texture versus just straw. Add a couple flickies. There we go. Looking good. All right, next line. We're gonna do this O. Now you could make this O boring and just do like an O, but we wanna kind of have it kind of curl in and then curl out like that. So you're, gonna, well, you're actually gonna wanna do a skeleton the whole time. This might take a couple efforts. So if you want, if you have an issue like with the letter O, just take a piece of paper, just draw a bunch of circles. Just get your hand used to making that motion. The easiest way to make a circle is you really wanna make sure that your wrist is locked and you're using your arm to make the circle. So go like this. Don't go like this because it's gonna be bumpy. You're not gonna have as much control over making the O as you would if you just locked your beautiful wrist and used your arm. So just kind of practice doing this motion, locking that wrist, getting comfortable. And when you're locking your wrist, you don't need to put extra pressure on your pencil in order to have more control. You can just go loose. You can lock your wrist without having to squeeze the fuck out of your pencil, okay? So I went ahead, did my O. When I'm adding weight, again, we're doing the ribbon. So going down to the bottom, when it starts to change directions, that's when you, you, you uh, shut it down. Then you have this guy kind of start there. Same thing here. Have it go like that. Same thing here, and then boop. If you want it to kind of um, get a little bit thicker, just add a little bit of weight on the top. You can normally use your guide. You don't necessarily always have to put everything on the left or the right of the line. It's really just what looks the best visually. Like obviously this O isn't as quite as wide as my other one. I'm just gonna kind of go in there and add a little bit more. There we go. Go ahead and do some long flicks for this one because it's so rounded. It's just easier to kind of do the long flicks to fill it out at first so it looks like it's going in that direction you want it to go. 
So, you know, hold your paper with one hand, keep it still, so you don't, you know, maintain the flicks within the container of your letter. Definitely use it, it's all wrist during this part. All right, let me add some flicks. Just so that way your ends are different lengths. I'll do that, I'll like start drawing and I'll just stop mid-sentence. There we go. All right, let's do some B, let's do some P's. Do a straight line diagonal. I'm trying to do a straight diagonal line, it's super hard. All right, come on, Dina, there we go. Sometimes if you go slower, it's easier. All right, let's do the skeleton for the top. We want it to go a, a below. It's up to you how wide you want this to be. Start, you want it to end right below the X height. Same thing, we're gonna do the ribbon effect. I want this guy to blow, so I'm gonna add a little bit above and below my skeleton. I'm gonna go like this for this guy. Now for this sample, you don't have to have these two layers touch. So I'm actually just gonna end it right there and then just start to fill it. And I think for this one, I'm actually going to have the stem not touch the top of the bowl either, because I just think it looks cool, even though that's not what I did in the sample. <laughs> I have lipstick on my iPad. I'm not really sure how I did that. I did quite a bit of hand lettering in college a whole lifetime ago, and you've inspired me to play around with it again. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that, Lori. That's awesome. Lettering is really fun. It's just, I feel like it's less intimidating than any other art form because it's just 26 characters. You know what I mean? You don't have to know how to draw everything. You don't have to draw people or hands or plants or animals or whatever you want to draw or buildings or worry about perspective. You're just drawing letters and you're just finding really cool ways to draw them. And a lot of people think lettering is so easy. And although, yes, is it easier than other art forms? I think so. But... <laughs> Almost everyone who starts out with lettering, they it all looks the same because it's just like when, it, when you're a kid, you have to work on your handwriting in order to have good handwriting. It's the same thing with lettering. So don't let its simplicity fool you into thinking it's easy. It's just easier. It doesn't make it any less hard. I don't know. So this cue is weird as hell. Are you ready? Okay. So instead of, the, it's pretty much just an upside down O with a flick. So you wanna do a quick O like that. So it's curling in and then have it come over here. And then it's gonna, if you wanna go ahead and add the flick, you wanna make sure it doesn't go out too far. It's like a little butt, it's like a little butt. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad. Lori says she forgot how much she enjoyed it. All right, we're going to go ahead and add the first ribbon effect on our go boop and then boop and then boop. Have that end. Then we're going to do a little add some weight to this guy, have it blow it out. Now, for those of you who are watching this in the future, past, maybe the, the past, I don't know, anyone who's watching this video, if you would like to learn more vintage styles like this one, 
please consider checking out patreon.com slash lettershop. I release new lettering workbooks like this one and live streams and all different cool kinds of cool ways to learn lettering, not just lettering the art form, but also how to start to sell that lettering for a profit. Um, so just hook, hook a girl up, show your support, learn some cool styles, and join our community because it's really fun. song i'm listening to makes me really happy mm. it's called hard out here oh sorry it's called the story by uh brandy not brandy sorry she has a last name uh carlisle brandy carlisle it's a really good song all right so i want this bottom tail of the queue to kind of extend past that bowl so I'm going to have a couple flicks just kind of to establish that visual then I'm going to do a couple little long scribbles to kind of help dictate the direction that this line is going into and then I'll start to scribble in then always do the ends with flicks never try to scribble in the flicks Something about that, just the act of going like this, just makes it look more realistic, I think. And again, make sure the licks, the flicks are different lengths. When you're doing bowls, you want to have a couple lines on the outside of the bowl. Oh, look at it, it looks so good. Maybe even have a fade where there's a couple lines just kind of disappear off the flick. All right, that's our Q, let's do the R. I think R and S are probably my two favorite letters ever. So we're gonna do one diagonal line. Now you'll notice as you keep drawing this style, the more letters you draw, the easier and easier it gets because it's just, you're warming up your hand, especially if you haven't drawn in like a long time. It's gonna take a while for your brain and your muscle <laughs> to kind of match up again to the point where you want it to. It just takes practice. And also when you write, since we live in a society where everything's just, you're just typing all the time or scrolling, we, there's a lot of muscles in our hands that we're not using anymore because we stopped writing things. So you will notice that like after you've drawn for maybe like 30 minutes, your hand will be fatigued because I don't know if you knew this after only three days, if you stop using any of your muscles and in, in your body, they will atrophy. So just like <laughs> it will take a while for them to kind of <laughs> start working the way that you want them to again. All right. So we went ahead, we did our stem of the R. We're going to try to do a fast. You don't want to go too slow in this. You don't want to be like this because then you're paying attention too much to the line and not to the overall shape of the letter itself. So I go up, just barely touching my cap height, and then boop. I'm gonna make sure you have a nice amount of space in between where this bowl is ending and where your X height line is. All right, I'll see you later. Your hubby's got super, got supper ready. Oh, nice. You're welcome, Lori. I'm so glad you are able to hang out during the live stream. I'll see you later. Bye. All right, now we're gonna do the leg of the R, just kind of have it curl up right along that baseline. So I'm gonna go ahead like a ribbon, have this guy kind of go out, have it stop right along that angle, have it come out like this. If I notice that it's starting to get thinner, I could just add more weight to it, not a big deal. This guy, I'm gonna use it, do a ribbon, have it come up like that. Boop. You just want it to get thinner in certain places, even though it's not a super noticeable difference between the thins and thicks. I'm just going ahead and like making my line weight more even. Like this line should be the same weight as this line in this line. This little curve should be the same weight as this curve. So you, you have to try to start to see these patterns in your work so you can make them look as good as they should be. Because with lettering, it might seem easy, 
but these little mishaps, like the space in your letters are off or all of your strokes in your letters aren't, you know, somewhat the same. People are going to be noticing those mistakes, maybe not knowing what's wrong with your work, but kind of getting that feeling that something is definitely not right in the piece. I can't point out what it is, but it's distracting me from the art form that you're trying to create. And you don't want eyesores in your work. You want people to be able to appreciate what you're making without being able to see the errors in it. And this is why these worksheets are so helpful because you're you're doing what's called deliberate practice so that way you can actually start to memorize these letters so you don't need reference you don't need to spend hours on instagram or pinterest in order to draw you can just draw from your beautiful fucking imagination <laughs> scribble it in there this one i'm gonna do a couple lines like thread and then I'll scribble it in. Flick out the ends, like split ends that you don't want. <laughs> Add a couple little details, a couple extra missed lines in there. Boop. There we go. Actually, don't like how I flick those out. Boop. You need a couple of dots and a couple of long ones to make it varied. So that's what we've done so far. For those of you who are just kind of tuning in, we went ahead and did this entire page. So A through L, and now we're doing um, M through Z. Brenda! I think those inconsistencies is what makes uh, work look more amateur. I've been nothing but deliberate practice now on some of the classic typefaces. We're working on Helvetica now. Nice. Yeah, Helvetica is actually a really hard type style, I find. That was like the first workbook I ever made was for Helvetica because I just wanted to know what it was like to make a workbook. And this was like years before Lettering Adventures was even like an idea in my head. And it was to this, I don't know if it's pro, it's pro I mean, don't get me wrong, it probably has a lot to do with the fact that it was my first workbook, but... Oh, it was super hard. That was, that was difficult, man. I love it. All right, I'm gonna do orange now. All right, S, you ready for S? S is the hardest letter of them all. All right. So with this S, you want it to be kind of loose. So you don't want to be like, right? You want to kind of do it fast. And every time you draw, it's gonna look a little different. But what, what makes this S awesome is that the top bowl, the spine, right, that goes down, needs to be bigger than the bottom to give it that kind of old vintage look. Do I still have it on my site? Um, no, I removed it. I think. Yeah, I removed it. Because it was like, ooh, I like that one. I'm going to do it again, though. But... It was on how to practice and getting and get better. So I might just have it there for free, but you're gonna have to check. It's a lettershop.com slash blog. That would be the name of the article is how to how to letter and get better faster, how to draw, get better faster, something like that. All right, so I like that S the most. So this is where it gets kind of complicated. So we're gonna start actually from here. We're gonna start with the spine. We're gonna start right about here. <coughs> All right, go like this. Go on the other side, go like this. All right, I'm gonna do that again. I'm starting right here where the angle is changing. I don't wanna start here. I'm gonna start with the biggest stroke, which is the spine. So I'm gonna start right here where the angle starts to change. And then I would stop right there. And then I'm gonna go a little bit over here to finish the line and then have it end. And then I'm gonna do it again here. And then I'm gonna end it like that. I want both these to kind of taper out. And that's what I want to do. So that way, this spine, I'm gonna go over it a few more times, is more or less the same weight. And that's how you do the letter S. Now whether or not the S is like this, you really, I always go like this. And then on the other side, go like this. And then if you want it to be sans serif, you go like that. And you kind of do it using that kind of ribbon-like structure. 
So it's the same thing, just in a slightly different structure. All right, now I'm gonna do a couple of long flicks to kind of help fill it so it looks like it's going in that direction of the paintbrush, which is gonna be particularly hard on this one. So just focus, because you really want this to look like one, like it was done with one stroke. Have it go in. All right, and then we can start to scribble it. All right, cool. Yeah, if you find it, feel free to just link it in the chat. All right, I'm just gonna, now I can start to scribble. Since I have the baseline of those lines, I can kind of fill this a little bit more and not feel like, oh, it's gonna look like it's going in the wrong direction, it's okay. As long as we have a couple of those basic lines in there, it should be fine. As long as you can't see the scribble in it. Again, you don't want to be filling in the lines going this way. You shouldn't be filling it in this way. It should be this way. flicks here, add a couple lines on the outside. Don't want it to have too much texture, so I'm gonna get rid of it a little bit here. There we go. And then we have the magical S. All right, let's do an easy T. Just going to do an angled line for the stem. And since I already have a thing there, I'm going to go whoop. You just want to make sure that it more or less hits that cap height at some point. Now, if it's easier for you just to do this, you don't have to worry about trying to do a ribbon. I do the ribbon just mostly to break it up into steps so you know where the line would get thinner and thicker. Let me just fill it in. Filling it in, so it's more of a wave. I'm just kind of doing it in pieces. So then I can scribble it in. And then when you get to the end, just flick it out like this versus going like this. A couple varied weights at the end. Have it kind of taper off. This one isn't quite as wide as the top, so I'm gonna add like another line here. There we go. And then we got ourselves a messy tea. Alright, almost out of coffee. All right, we're doing this for about an hour and a half, just a little bit left to go. I'll try to um, go a little bit faster. Do pink now for the U and the V. The U, we want to start here, go like that. So a U and then flick down, add the ribbon effect. As that go out, and then this guy goes like that. So you wanna make sure your line's even, that when it gets smaller here at the base of the letter, that it's a more or less a smooth transition. So if you need to add a little bit of weight on each side, that's cool. And then we're gonna have this guy kind of blow up. I think I'll have this guy blow up too. It'll kind of pucker a little bit. 
and then I'll just pretty lightly scribble it in. Pretty lightly again with my pencil, with my pen here. Almost done. Kind of fill in some of this negative space. Add a couple flicks. A little buried weight here. The top and bottom. There we go. Super fast. The V. Have to go in and then have this one come out and go towards it and meet in the middle. Now I'm going to use both these lines as the center of each of my containers here. Just so I can have this guy kind of come out a little bit more. I'm going to scribble it in there. I'd probably make a decision as you're scribbling to probably always go from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top, whatever makes you feel the most comfortable because it'll help make all of your letters look the same if you color them in a similar fashion. Flick it out on the edges so that way they're varied and they don't look so the same. Add a couple additional lines along the line that you already have. There you go. Color should be used next. Use this gold color. All right, this W, just like the M, it's really similar. So we're gonna do two strokes at a time. I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit. Have this one come out and then have this guy and then have this guy kind of come out and then this guy kind of curls back into itself. So there we have the skeleton. I'm going to use more or less the skeleton as the center. So I'm going to add a little bit of weight above and below this line. So above, below, above, below. So I have this guy kind of come out above, below. This guy's going to come out above, below, and have that guy come out. Since this line is coming out, I want this line to kind of be similar. So it's probably the easiest way to do like more complicated shapes is do the skeleton, use it as the center point to add weight, and then fill. Add a couple flicks so they're varied. Make this left stem is a little bit too the same weight, same here. Oops, gotta make sure the flicks go in the same direction. It's a little bit too much paper showing, so I'm just gonna fill it in a little bit. Especially since it's yellow. Yellow and white always fight. Alright, add a couple additional little lines. So it looks stressed out. There you go. And there you have it for W. And I think we're on our last letters. Cool. I'm going to use this purple color. Let's do this Y. Again, we want to kind of do this kind of fast, so like that. Just try to get that right shape. So you do a more condensed U, right? So you want to do the U uh, way below your baseline or your X height there. Have it come from here and have it kind of look out like that. Almost like a little pain. 
the faster you do it, the more it's going to have that quick kind of look. So that's our skeleton. We're going to go ahead above and below. Oops. Come on. A bit too thick. Have this guy come up. This guy comes down on the outside. Whoop. This guy's a little bit too bloated. There we go. So it should get thin right here and then right here. Obviously the bottom is thinner, so we're gonna fix that up. Get a little scruffy with it. And also, this line should look like it's coming out of this one. So it should be more like that. There we go. And then we fix. Now it's supposed to be scruffy, so you can kind of get away with more of those mistakes in the beginning. As long as you start to develop an eye to see those mistakes so you can make improvements, then you're good to go. Add a couple, like it's tapering off. Add a couple lines on the outside. They can really be anywhere, just as long as you don't have too many similar lengths of lines next to each other, you're pretty much good. All right, so this Z looks very similar to a two. So if you wanna have it be like more of like a normal Z, you could do that. Start with a cane then have it kind of come out like that. Add some weight. All the way down. Then have this guy kind of look like it's coming underneath it. And then have it pucker out a little bit if you want to. And then just fill. Probably have this a little bit higher so it actually reaches the cap height. There we go. Try to do some long strokes for having a hard time maintaining that line. Have this guy taper out a little bit, flick, flick out the edges. Oh, there's three of you left. Thanks for sticking, sticking it out with me. All right. A couple more flicks here. Have it look like it's tapering. Boop. Boop. And then we have a Z. And then we finish the worksheet. Ow, 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 ow. That's what's up. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Look how pretty and colorful these are. Do what you do. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it, look at it. It's pretty sweet, pretty exciting. So remember, if you weren't here for when we did this word glad, you definitely wanna make sure that you do your skeleton first, just write it out. Try to figure out a way to stack the letters together to be able to have the letters kind of structured in a more interesting way so they kind of fit together like a glove. Then you wanna add weight and then you wanna fill them in with that scratchiness and then you add a couple of those detail lines where it looks almost like it's stressed out, that kind of vibe. Now, when doing these kinds of letters, you don't necessarily have to have them look so textured. Like if I did with this L again, I can, there's nothing wrong with having it actually filled. Like let's fill it without as much texture. But there's no rule saying that you need to have that much texture. So hold on, let's balance that out. Something that I would normally do is you could just have the edges have the texture in them like that. Right? Or you could have them look a little bit, I have to erase it in order to show you. Or you could have the edges almost look like cut pieces of paper where it's like, right? 
like it almost got ripped out. You can, instead of having all of those um, additional lines, you could do like a line drop where you're just following the left side of everything. That's a more of a, a nicer decoration. I could go ahead and fill this with a line stroke, right? Where I'm just showing the skeleton inside of that line. You can go and add a drop shadow to it. You can play with the colors. There's lots of different things you guys can do with this style. It doesn't necessarily need to be as textured and crazy as it is um, in this worksheet. <laughs> My dogs are sitting on things. Um, but yeah, so I hope you had a really good time kind of just playing with these letters. And, and, and if you guys want to get the full worksheet, again, you guys can get that at patreon.com slash letter shop. Uh, we don't do too many free uh, workshops like these. We do it probably like once every few months. So if you do want to get access to more live videos and more videos in general on my process or how to create more unique lettering styles, uh, we are going to be making a lot more videos this year uh, that will be for patrons only. Um, if you want to get access to the workbooks, it's only $7 a month. You get a new workbook, usually within the first two weeks of each month. $15 gets you access to all of the live feeds and videos. $20, you actually get critiques. So you can send me any work that you want as many times as you want, and I'll actually put it into Photoshop, give you notes, and tell you how you can improve your lettering for it to get better. And then finally, we have $50 a month, which might sound a lot, but you get a lot in return. We have a mastermind group where we actually meet up twice a week. We talk for at least an hour or two every week on an app called Discord, and we talk about our goals. This is for those of you who are really wanting to make money from lettering, or if you really wanna take lettering more seriously to grow your audience, if you wanna take this more professionally, we can kind of help you through the kind of freelance process, how to build your own products, how to just make your lettering more salesworthy, to get more eyes on your work. And also, I think the hardest thing about this whole artist lifestyle is staying accountable it's one thing to say you're an artist, it's another to actually pursue it and thrive in it. And having a community of people to be able to talk to about it really makes one hell of a difference. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this live stream. Again, feel free to go back and scrub through it. You can see all of my technical difficulties within the first 15 minutes. I mean, that's the life, right? Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are amazing. Bye, Brenda, and anyone else who's watching. You guys are awesome. Bye. Oh, I see you later, okay? I see you later. Ringo says bye. <laughs>